Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and this is... Luke Smith and we're here to continue our playthrough of Mansion of Madness 2nd Edition. We might even conclude our playthrough today. Oh yes, we're hopefully. Hoping. Yes, yes. We're hoping. Because our viewers have given us a suggestion which, if we're successful, might allow us to get to this final objective here yes. at the entrance of the mansion. So Steve Main got the most votes. Let's oh. go to the table and see what he wants us to do. Run, blast it! Forget me! And run! cries Harvey at both William and Min. William looks to Min, split between his desire to keep both of his friends safe, but he beckons to her as he charges through the door. This way! He calls to her. As the door flies open, it reveals a great monstrosity of wings and fangs. If Min's to make it, I'll have to take care of this beast. William plants his feet and shoves against the beast in hopes of clearing the room for Min. So the action Steve wants William to perform here is to push the hunting horror into this space. Now to do this, he'll have to test his strength, and the target number will be the monster's brawn, which is the value found here, a three in this case. So William will be rolling four dice for his strength, and we'll need three successes. Luke, I'm gonna do this roll. Wish me luck. Good luck. All right. Yes! Oh, look at that! Three successes! Now, we had a backup plan if I had failed, and we were counting on me failing, and that was Min was going to have to run up here and evade the hunting horror running into this room. But now that won't be necessary because the monster has been pushed, and William has the option of following that push. Which we should do so the monsters are more likely to attack William so Min can get away. Yeah, that's a good point. So we'll move William here, making him the closer target to these monsters. A very helpful self-sacrifice he's making here. And that will end William's activation. Min took off after William following his lead. I will end this abomination, Harvey. We will get help. As Min moves to the conservatory and back into the mansion, if I can get these abominations from this house, perhaps it will drive these monsters away from William and Harvey. A cry of alarm stops her heart for just a beat when she enters the study and Eugene bellows out in fear, startled by her sudden entrance. She crosses the room to him. You must run for your own safety. Flee this house. They're gone, Vanderbilt, mocks Harvey as he watches his friends flee to safety. Your scheme is ruined. You think them safe? Vanderbilt laughs. I have many pets in these halls that are no doubt filling their bellies with your friends as you waste your last breaths. You fiend. Fearful he may have miscalculated, Harvey attacks Vanderbilt in order to put an end to this monster and try to save his friends. Harvey pivots and drives his hip into his opponent. Unfortunately, <laughs> Harvey being an older guy, his hips aren't what they used to be. He's going to have to test his agility, which is only two. And we're going to need two successes, unfortunately, Luke. So over to you. All the best with your roll. Wish me luck, too. You can do it. You can't really be blamed for that, Luke. Harvey chose a tactic that he wasn't really suited for, but he still has another action. Let's attack again. So once again, we'll use the heavy weapon, his 2x4, which we're treating as his cane. As Vanderbilt closes in on Harvey, he heaves his weapon upward in a tight swing, and he'll have to test his strength, which is better than his agility, but it's only three. It's too bad he can't swing this 2x4 using his, his lore or his, his influence. Wish me luck. Good luck, Luke. Oh, we actually have a cocked die here. It's not quite laying flat, so go ahead and roll that one again. Oh no. Here, I'll pull these out of the way. And Luke, go for it again. Oh, yes. three successes. Well, guess what? You only needed two to succeed. And it says, Harvey's weapon connects with his attacker's chest with a sickening crunch. <laughs> the monster suffers damage equal to your test result. So great that you got that extra damage because three more damage is exactly what we needed to defeat Vanderbilt. Yes! Good riddance to you and your horrible schemes and tragic sense of hat fashion. Sure, you want to stick around to be next? And with that, we end the investigator phase. We're now told that Min's hand suddenly begins to burn. This mythos event affects the investigator who has a light source with the lowest observation. And of all the investigators for this to be, unfortunately, it's Min who we're trying to escape from this mansion. She's the only one holding a light source as she has these candles. The fire from her light spreads to her hand. Min instinctively drops what she's holding to clutch her wounded hand. She suffers two face down damage and drops one random light source. The candle will be dropped into her space. And now we're told before she realizes it, the fire has spread all around her. 
and we place fire in her space and each adjacent space. Wow, are you kidding me? <laughs> I wish I was kidding you, Luke. This is a terrible turn of events. Poor Min, even if she escapes, is going to take more wounds as she runs through this fire. Spaces are considered adjacent if they share a border, a door, an impassable border, or a wall. This means we also have to place fire here and in the space with William, unfortunately. If I'm reading this effect correctly. Turns out Min can do a lot of damage with a few candles. We're now told that this cultist here moves up to two spaces to be in a space with as many investigators as possible. Then it attacks each investigator in its space. So we can actually remove these items here, replacing them with Harvey's card. The cultist swings the staff wildly about with great fervor and little skill. Harvey now will suffer two face down damage, but agility negates. I'll roll that. Well, I negated one of those damages. However, he takes one, and this is actually his fifth. We will now remove all of Harvey's face down damages, and he'll gain this wounded condition. He can no longer perform the move action more than once each round, and once he's suffered damage equal to his health, once again, he is eliminated. These battles are taking their toll on Harvey, but he's more than proved his value to this team. We're now told the hunting horror moves three spaces towards the investigator within range with the lowest strength. This is good because although Min is within three spaces, range is not counted through doors, so this will leave the hunting horror here with William. Also, when a monster starts its activation in a space with fire like we have here, then it takes one damage, which we'll give to it right now. So it has five life left. Now the monster attacks, grabbing William with its claws, attempting to drag him away. So we're going to have to test William's agility, and he has an agility of three. Luke, I can't remember whose turn it is to roll. I think it's yours. All right, well then I'll roll, and we need to get two successes. I am on fire the last few episodes. And so is Min and William. <laughs> yes, they're literally on fire. Okay, this says that if we pass, William holds his ground and bats the beast away. Now we're told that the deep one moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator, which in this case would clearly be William, again, keeping these monsters away from Min. And then it attacks the investigator in its space with the lowest strength. Growling and hissing, the Deep One attacks with savage swipes of its webbed claws. William will now suffer three damage, but a strength plus one roll will negate. Which means I'm rolling five dice. We'd love to see three successes here, Luke. What's going on with me? I don't know. I think I've stolen all of your lucky Lukeness for this series. Wait, William's got the Elder Ward, which lets him roll one extra die. Okay, that's true. So we'll keep this one as a success. We have these two here, and William does get to roll one more die. So go ahead with that one. There it is. <laughs> Very nice. And you know what? We could spend one of these tokens here. Yes. And then we can convert this one to a success as well, and William suffers no damage. Now each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range with the highest horror rating. Well, Min will be unaffected by this, and William will roll against the hunting horror. We're told that the creature makes a strange whistling noise that pierces through the din of flapping wings and whipping tail. William must now test his observation, which is four, so that's not too bad. We needed two successes, and look at that, I rolled them again. William covers his ears and waits for the sound to fade. Now Harvey just has to perform a horror check against this cultist. The cultist exclaims the truth of a present and imminent horror, suffer two face down horror, but observation plus one negates. Harvey has a very good observation of four, so we'll be rolling five dice for him. Let's see what I can do. There we go, Luke. The two successes we need to negate both of those face down horrors, and that ends the mythos phase. With flame shooting up all around her, Min does not hesitate for a moment. Run, lass, run! Calls Eugene as Min leaps into the entry hall. When an investigator enters a space with fire, it will take a face down damage, so we'll add one to Min now. And with her second point of movement, Min runs towards the door. The mansion's door is just in, and as we tap on this token in the application, we're told that the mansion's front door is just before you. The investigation is complete if an investigator escapes the mansion with the ritual component's unique item which we know Min has. So we will now tap on the escape option and see what happens. Min throws open the door and flees into the night, carrying the proof of Vanderbilt's heinous crimes with her. The investigation is complete. 
Each investigator wins the game unless an effect such as an insane condition specifies otherwise. Nope, we're all good. The investigators burst through the front door of the mansion and run for their vehicle, desperately clutching the components from the ritual site, incontrovertible evidence of the cult and proof of their connection to the disappearances. Your vehicle sputters and slides as you accelerate down the uneven drive. If you can make it to the police department alive, the cult will surely be destroyed. You smash through the gates at the end of the drive and careen out into the road, leaving the Vanderbilt estate far behind you. Now, just in case you thought we forgot, Yes, when Vanderbilt was defeated, we should have given a clue token to William. Yes. I just remembered that now. Thankfully, we didn't need that token. Nope. And we succeeded. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't sure if we would. Things were going really well at the beginning. And then when I saw that Min was nearly out there, but fire was spreading all over the oh, house. Oh, I, I was decided. just like... No. Yay. <laughs> Thankfully, though, we did make it out. And I've now played this scenario about six or seven times. And every time oh. I've played... The outcome has been a little different. It really depends on what the players choose oh. to do and how the application responds to it. So if you have not played this yet already and you no. plan to play this scenario again, don't worry, you might encounter something quite different than what we found here. Certain things will remain the same, but lots of other things can change. Yes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed playing this through with us. We really enjoyed playing it with you. If you have any questions, though, feel free to put them in the comments below and we'll gladly answer them as soon as we get a chance. But until the next episode, Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.